Hey y'all, once again, welcome back. Today we're going to begin a new video series highlighting some of America's greatest model railroads. We're going to be showcasing one individual train, this Utah Belt export-loaded coal train, as it makes its way from mines in Utah to ports in the East Coast. Along the way, we'll visit some unique and interesting operations on different layouts throughout the country. I look forward to sharing. Let's go ahead and get started. The train that we're going to follow in this series originated here at Descanso, Utah. In the background is the U.S. carbon mine number 31 where our train was loaded. Meanwhile, in the foreground, another eastbound loaded coal train passes on the main line. Descanso is a location here on the Utah Belt, a fictional railroad created by Eric Bruman. Coal traffic is abundant on the Utah Belt as it serves multiple mines across the state. Many of those trains are taken eastbound to interchange with the BNSF to be delivered to their destinations. We'll begin the video series here at John Parker's BNSF Fall River Division. This is an incredible modern HO scale layout. The Utah Belt crew has interchanged with the BNSF and brought the train to a stop here at Richland where they'll disembark. A BNSF crew will hop onto the Utah Belt power and bring the train eastbound over the Fall River Division. Typically, BNSF power would be added, but due to a power shortage, this train will retain its Utah Belt power for the remainder of its journey east. After the crews on board, the brake test is complete, and the dispatcher is given the train a clear signal. They'll proceed eastbound out of Richland. a small diner just east of Richland, and our trains begun its journey eastbound over the plains of Colorado, working its way towards the Rocky Mountains. We're at a location known as Rocky Junction, where we catch a Sperry rail car. This is a piece of maintenance away equipment that's used by the railroads to check the geometry and integrity of the rails, track, and right-of-way to ensure everything's in good working order.
Our train is making its way towards Logan Hill. This is where the Black Diamond Mine is located and a major point of operations on the Fall River Division. There's four staging tracks here where empty trains are held for their turn at the mine to be loaded and then proceed around the loop track and continue eastbound, the same direction that our train today is traveling. After Logan Hill, the railroad is double track mainline with double crossovers and high speeds running all the way to the town of Kimber in the east, which is at the foot of the mountains. Here, the dispatchers lined our train around a stopped loaded grain train waiting for a crew change. We're here at the small town of Kimber at the foot of the mountains. This is a major point of operations and the engineers have slowed the train down as it passes through the Kimber yard. From here on eastward, once the train leaves the yard, it's a long and steep grade towards the summit of the mountains, and many trains will stop here to receive helper locomotives for their journey eastbound. There's a set of BNSF ES44 ACs, which are helper locomotives. However, due to the three AC locomotives that our train has on the head end, helper service is not needed to get our train over the mountains. Also here at the town of Kimber, the Union Pacific Railroad joins the Fall River Division. From here eastward, it's common to catch both UP and BNSF trains as they have trackage rights over the BNSF Fall River Division between here at Kimber and Fall River Yard. Headed out of Kimber Yard, the engineer throttles up the locomotive to notch 8 as it begins the roughly 2% grade all the way to the summit of the pass. Just east of Kimber, the grade is apparent here at Crater Loop. This is a piece of railroad engineering which John has modeled and drawn inspiration from locations such as the Big Ten Curve, the Tehachapi Loop, and other locations that really define American railroading and are icons across the country. This owned fictional piece of railroad is really a spectacular model and representation of a lot of prototype locations across the country. Here, our train tackles Crater Loop as it continues to make its way up grade towards Summit.
We're approaching the siding of Overlook where the dispatchers coordinated our first meet. Here we'll find our first westbound freight, which our dispatchers put in the siding so that we can pass on the main line. This westbound freight is a maintenance of way train led by two classic SD40-2 locomotives. This particular train is carrying track equipment on specialized rail cars, which have rails on top of the flat cars that the track equipment is loaded onto and held to where it's transported across the BNSF system. Just east of Overlook, we catch the train passing through a snow shed. These are structures built in areas that are prone to snow drifts to keep the snow off the tracks. east of Overlook siding and the railroad's down to a single main line as it makes its way through the heart of the Rocky Mountains and approaches the town of Winston, which is at the summit of the grade. Her train is nearly at the top of the climb and is approaching the town of Winston, where the dispatchers coordinated a meet with another westbound freight. Also at Winston is the entrance to the Fall River National Forest.
Winston is a small town nestled in the heart of the Rockies and a major point of operations for mountain railroading here on the Fall River Division. Here at the summit of the grade, there's a wide to turn locomotives, passing sidings to meet trains, and multiple spur tracks for maintenance of way equipment. Here, a Utah Belt boxcar was set out for repairs. This is a load that was interchanged with the Utah Belt at Salt Lake City and destined for points east via the BNSF. The second westbound freight retained its Canadian Pacific power. This train originated out of Canada and carries frac sand and is destined for oil fields where the frac sand will be used in the oil production process. After reaching the summit, the engineers will put the locomotives into dynamic brakes for the descent down the eastern slope of the mountains towards Fall River. And with our train now out of the way, the dispatcher has lined the frac sand train westbound out of the siding to now descend the western slope of the mountains back towards Kimber. After descending out of the Rocky Mountains, we catch up with our train as it descends through the foothills towards Fall River. At Sage, we catch another westbound freight. This is a loaded auto rack train, which is making its way westbound. The dispatchers held it here at the control point of Sage for a coal train to descend and come out of the mountains before it's cleared over the mountain pass. We're now at Fall River Yard. This is a major point of operations here on the railroad and a division point where the tracks split into three different directions as they leave both east and west out of the yard. Here at the yard office, we catch a set of local power. These are two SD40-2 locomotives, which are used for switching. Meanwhile, in the background, our train is gonna proceed into the yard with a restricted signal. 
This is a flashing red signal, which the dispatcher has given the engineer, telling him to proceed into the yard at restricted speed. In the foreground are the yard tracks where cars are switched into inbound and outbound trains and also put onto local freights where they are both delivered and picked up from nearby customers. In the background, our train enters one of the three holding tracks. Our train will briefly stop for a crew change before receiving permission from the dispatcher to continue eastbound. With the new crew on board, our train is once again ready to continue its journey eastbound. As our train works its way upgrade out of Fall River Yard in the background, we get a great view of the Fall River engine facility. This is an incredible model that John has built of a modern day engine facility. Here locomotives are serviced, fueled, and maintained in between assignments. There's a set of local power here which is used for locals that originate and terminate here, as well as road power. These are big wide cab GE or EMD locomotives which are assigned to road freights that bring these trains over the steep mountain passes or across the plains to destinations across the United States. With our train now east out of the yard, we're at the small town of Horton, and we catch it for one last time as it leaves the Fall River Division. Here, our train is going to continue over the BNSF Transcontinental Railway as it proceeds eastbound for export. This train still has a long journey ahead of it, and we have a lot of layouts to share. In the next part of this video series, we're going to catch up with it at East Central Texas on Pierre Larson's modern BNSF Railway. I'm excited to share that with you, but in the meantime, I wanted to thank John for this incredible opportunity to share his layout with you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.